Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy. Welcome to today's video. Today we're checking out the MEX or Mug Slicer Expander by Bifaco. This is a really cool little expander module for the Mug Slicer. If you don't know the Mug Slicer, check out my video on it. It's a really cool step sequencer with these nice little sliders per step. It's so nice to program and get some melodies on the fly with it. And it also has quite a few clock division multiplication kind of features. It has gate outputs per step as well as an all gates output. And it also works as a mux demux. But uh, yeah, go, go check that video out because today we're focused on the expanders. And what do the expanders do? Well, each max that you get adds a lane of gate sequencing to the mux slicer. So basically the switches are the gate on switches when you turn them to the right side, right? And that right side is normalized to the all gates output of the mux slicer. Now let's check that out really quickly. I'm going to press play on the mux slicer here, which is this knob up and already we can see the LED traveling over here, right? Stepping through. Uh, the sequence in the mug slicer. Now if I turn on all of these steps on my first max, you see those LEDs are lighting up now as well. Right? So in the middle position you're muting and in the right position you're letting the all gates output pass through that particular step on the max. So let's make a little patch to hear that in action, right? So I'm going to send the output of my first max to the trigger input of per call over here. If you don't know, per call is a quad envelope generator slash VCA slash mixer dedicated for percussion voices. If I take the fourth output here to my output, that's already mixing all four channels. We're also going to have a little bit of a cameo from the noise plethora module here. I will be doing a full video on this one soon, but for now you're just going to get to hear how cool the noises sound coming out of it. But there you go already we're getting that low rumble it's it's uh self oscillating because my resonance is all the way high so why don't we send an envelope output the first envelope out to the cv control here and now we get kind of a noisy kick right on this first lane of gate sequencing that i have available with max number one if i turn off the steps and only leave two we now get a classic sort of four on the floor, right? Now, here's the thing. The gate mode knob on the mug slicer multiplies that gate. So you can have two, three, four, etc. triggers per step, right? So if I turn it up now, now we're getting two. Now we're getting three. Now four, and so on and so forth. So keep that in mind, because that's a really cool feature of the combination Mug Slicer MEX. The fact that you not only let pass uh, a gate, but you can actually create a burst for that gate by using the gate mode, which does have CV input as well. So you can send CV to control that parameter. Now the left side of the switches, these switches don't only turn to the right, they also turn to the left, right? And the left side is normaled to the clock output. So as you can already hear, my clock is multiplying to quite a bit, right? I can't even count that fast. The way to change the multiplication of the clock out on the mug slicer is by pushing in on the encoder and turning it. So now I'm making just one, two, three, one, two, three, mm. right? So this is, again, I can also create bursts and rolls on the left side by changing the division of the clock output, right? Now note that there's a gate input here on the max and that overrides the normalization to the clock output. So if I just stick a cable there, we won't hear anything on those steps, see? And if I connect an oscillator here, that's what we'll get. That oscillator will now control that roll, see? That's actually almost audio rate rolling there we go triplet again it's kind of a quintuplet or whatever you want and you can actually do it freely without it being a division of the clock at all here you go some rolls again of 
course you can control the uh, oscillators frequency externally to create cool effects that way as well let's take that out for now so that we're again based off of the subdivision of the clock out over here now let's create another lane right let's grab output number two so max number two and by the way you can have pretty much as many of these as you like i think i mean Befaco tried it with 10 and it worked fine i can see why there should be a limit so let's send output two to trigger two and we'll get the noise output number two for my noise plethora here and turn on some of the steps and make it shorter There we go. Kind of a tango, kind of a kind of bolero kind of a thing going there. I can make it go faster by just turning the speed knob here on the mug slicer. You can also tempo, tap tempo. That's pretty cool right there. Let's make a third voice. How's that? We'll grab the output of my third mix. We'll stick it into trigger input number three of the per call and we'll grab the filtered output of the white noise of the noise plethora. This is the analog output of noise plethora. We'll stick it in over here. And that's that, that more filtered burst, noise burst there. Pretty easy, right, to hear which one is which. Now, here's where we can start having some fun. For example, if I turn the gate mode up, now those that were at first just one hits become multiple hits, right? Same thing with the speed multiplication here. Now everything is just one hit. Here we go. Now. Left side is two hits, right side, one hit. Now left side, two hits, right side, burst. And what's cool about it is, is how hands-on it is. It's right at home with the mug slicer itself, with its little sliders, the decay sliders on the per call as well, right? Super fun to play with. Oh, and why not? take that COM output, which will reflect the positions of these knobs per step, and we'll take that to the cutoff frequency of our filter for our voice number three. Cool. And now we got triplity here. Cool, so the positions of these sliders now on the mug slicer will dictate how open the filter for that third voice is. I can also use it to make a little bit of a bass voice. All right, so let's take that to a multiple here. And from that multiple, we'll go back to that filter, because I did like that. But now we'll also control the vote proactive the vote proactive input of my generate three oscillator. And we'll send that to a filter. We'll take the uh, even wave to the filter eight input over here. And we can take the filter eight output into input number four of the per call, right? And we can take all gates output of the mug slicer into the trigger input number four of per call. Let's turn up that filter. I don't take that envelope output number four here and send it to the filter. Cool, so now we have a baseline happening here. And the number of gates is controlled by the gate mode over here. Now here's just two and here's one. Let's make it faster. And I can 
change my melody however I like. Turn up that filter a little bit. Cool rhythms. Right? I can turn the clock out, make it more, more bursty, more rolly if I want. slower now you can have fun randomizing things too for example I can take an output from contour 1 here and say as an LFO and send it to the gate mode input so now the uh, clock division for the all gate output is going to vary according to the contour one voltage, right? You can make it even slower. So right there, pretty cool, nice, nice variations. So it's still hands-on, but now you have a level of uh, external control that gives it some interest. I'll take an output of Orbit 3 here, Chaos Oscillator, and send it to the address. What's the address input on Mug Slicer? Well, it lets you stay on just one step. It lets you actually go to a specific step by sending voltage right there. So here we are on just one step here, right? And all the way to the left, it just cycles through the sequence. But if I send it a random voltage, or a chaotic voltage from the orbit. Now it's gonna dance around the steps in a chaotic fashion, non-linearly, right? So again, we have a very interesting sequence that's not ever really repeating the same way. Let me try that trick of using the LFO. Generate 3 LFO. And this time we'll try it with the third mix. There you go. So now the hi-hat does like a really fast roll. So now we have three different kinds of subdivisions happening, right? We have the one that's the clock out. We have the generate three, which is plugged into max number three. And we have the all gates output, which is controlled by the gate mode function there. And our chaotic oscillator is cycling through the steps in a chaotic manner. So cool. I'm gonna keep on having fun with this. I hope you liked it. I hope you liked the video and uh, I'll see you soon. Stay noisy.